Seiza, the revered Japanese way of sitting, is as beautiful as it is demanding. Picture this, knees bent under you, the weight of your torso pressing down on your calves and heels. Blood circulation grinds to a halt and soon enough your legs succumb to a tingling numbness. Despite the discomfort, Seiza remains the standard posture for formal occasions like Buddhist prayer services and tea ceremonies. But why, you may wonder, would anyone willingly endure such discomfort? The roots of Seiza run deep into Japanese culture, where it's ingrained from childhood that legs going numb is just part of the process. However, for those unaccustomed to it, Seiza can feel like a peculiar form of self-torture. Seiza wasn't always the norm. In medieval Japan, people often sat cross-legged or with one knee raised, even during formal events. Back then, a style known as Kiza was more common, though it was written with different kanji characters. Paintings from that era depict nobles and warriors sitting in what was called Rakuza, a seemingly comfortable pose with the soles of the feet touching. The real transformation came with the Edo period from 1603 to 1868 and the rise of the Tokugawa shoguns. These rulers, who brought peace to Japan after a century of warfare, made Seiza the correct way of sitting. Why? To render those sitting before them harmless. The numbness that comes with Seiza meant that anyone sitting in this position couldn't stand up quickly, thus reducing the risk of sudden attacks. Seiza became a symbol of respect and obedience, a way to show submission to the shogun or a superior. Interestingly, Seiza was also a method of torture. Criminals were made to sit in Seiza for extended periods. The pain and discomfort intended to elicit confessions or expressions of remorse. This history echoes today when people adopt Seiza while being reprimanded or offering apologies. The proliferation of Seiza was also aided by the spread of tatami mats. Initially reserved for the homes of nobles and samurai, tatami mats became commonplace by the early 18th century. Their softer, warmer surface made Seiza more bearable than sitting on hard wooden floors. Enter the Zabuton, a soft floor cushion that provided some relief from the discomfort of Seiza. But even with Zabuton, there were strict etiquettes to follow. For instance, stepping on the Zabuton before sitting on it was a faux pas. Instead, one had to first sit in Kiza behind the cushion and then transfer onto it gracefully. Today, the tradition of Seiza persists in certain cultural practices and sports. Martial artists, tea ceremony practitioners and even participants in traditional games like karuta, shogi or go often sit in Seiza. However, modern times are changing. With the advent of chairs and sofas, many Japanese people, especially the younger generations, find it increasingly difficult to sit in Seiza. In schools, enforcing Seiza for long periods is now seen as a form of abuse. Even the older generations who grew up with tatami often avoid Japanese-style rooms due to knee or back pain. Despite these changes, Seiza remains a fascinating aspect of Japanese culture, a blend of history, respect and a touch of endurance. 